All right. Woo! Let's begin. Why am I wearing glasses? Oh, no, 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 no. The sun, go back. Go back in the cloud. I think I need more kick. Wow, I had to redo my entire lighting. Stupid clouds. All right, so what I was trying to say is that I feel like wireless gaming mice are becoming so good that they're almost like hitting their peak performance. Uh, they're using the same sensors as their wired counterparts. The weight uh, is becoming less, so they're more comfortable to use for competitive. The latency is not an issue. And so what I feel like would be the next logical step for a brand to expand their wireless peripherals is to eliminate that inconvenience of actually charging your wireless mouse. And that is exactly the topic for this video. I'll be comparing the Logitech PowerPlay and that entire ecosystem versus the new Corsair MM1000 and the Dark Core mouse. Because I feel like removing the inconvenience of charging a mouse is a really good incentive to push consumers into that direction. Uh, so let's review right after this. Wondering how to fix a boring fan? Check out Halos RGB. They are super slim fan frames that light up your blades of any shade, come in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes to fit any fan and are controlled through your motherboard or your Fantex case. Available in beautiful aluminum or simple plastic, it's time to Halos your build. Outline what matters. Whoa, what's with the hair, man? New hair, new location. Let's begin. All right, so first of all, I want to say that both of these mouse pads kind of highlight the compromises of one another because they're a little bit different in terms of their approach to wireless charging. And I'm pretty sure that over time, we'll see a product that combines the feature set of both of these into one. So price-wise, the Corsair MM1000 has the advantage. The actual mouse pad cost $80 versus the Logitech G Power Play for the mouse pad alone is $100. And both of them kind of lock you into their own ecosystem, Corsair less so because they're using the Qi charging protocol, which is kind of like the, you know, the global standard now that Apple has implemented. And then Logitech has their own proprietary thing. So from a full value perspective, Corsair is still better because the mice are cheaper too. So you're looking about $170 for the entire package from the Corsair MM1000 and the dark core mouse versus $200 minimum for the uh, PowerPlay uh, mouse mat plus the G703. But if you also decide to go with the G903, which is more expensive, that's a $250 uh, deal for the entire package, which is hella pricey. Now, size-wise, Logitech one is slightly bigger, but I wouldn't say that's an advantage because they both fall into the category of like, you know, medium mouse pad in terms of area. So you don't gain that much extra movement real estate on the Logitech PowerPlay. But because of their differences in charging technology, each of them have this unique advantage over the other. So for example, with PowerPlay, because the actual circuitry that generates the electrical field and uh, the energy for your mouse is spanning the entire area of the mouse pad, uh, it is more delicate so you have to be more careful. But because of that, you can charge the mouse regardless of where the mouse is positioned on the mouse mat. Whereas with the MM1000, it's basically just a simple hard mouse mat with a small area where that Qi charger is built in. So your mouse can only charge when it's placed on top of that. And you have to align it. It's pretty easy just aligning the bottom of the mouse where the curve happens with those circles. And they've also implemented a clever status LED on the hub. So if it's blinking once per second, means your Qi charging is going fine, all the contacts are aligned properly, but if you get two blinks per second, means you have to move the mouse a little bit more for those contacts to align properly. And so there's your weird compromise. The dark core mouse cannot be charged while it's in use, and you have to place it onto that chi area for it to receive power, uh, while on the power play, as long as the mouse is on top of the mouse mat, you're constantly getting power. However, the unfortunate circumstance of this being a proprietary circuit, uh, Logitech power play is not approved in all countries, so for example, you cannot even buy it in Canada. And so that makes your decision much easier. And so this is where the Qi charging technology makes total sense. And it's a big advantage for Corsair because product approval globally will not be an issue. And functionally, I don't think there's any difference because the dark core can last up to 24 hours without any lighting, which I think is pretty reasonable. And as long as you don't forget to place it on top of the Qi charger while it's not in use, you'll never have any issues with a low battery indicator. However, there is actually actually no battery percentage indicator with the dark uh, uh, core mouse. You only have the bar from high, medium and low in the software. And you really kind of have to dig into the settings in order to find it, which I find strange. I would definitely love just a simple percentage battery indicator somewhere uh, on top of the driver software. Whereas with the power play and like the G703 and 903, that percentage indicator is a lot more precise 
and it's definitely visible because it, we have an entire battery compartment in the driver software, which is a lot more useful. Now, the one major advantage with the Corsair ecosystem is the Qi protocol, which means that you don't have to combine the Dark Core mouse with the MM1000. They're kind of like almost separate products that complement each other. And that's because the Dark Core mouse already has a Qi charger built in. So if you have one lying around, you can simply charge your mouse on top of that instead of using a mouse mat. Of course, it's more convenient convenient because it's kind of like an all enclosed unit. You can simply slide the mouse uh, into that corner for charging, but even so you can charge other peripherals and devices on top of the MM1000 um, as long as they support Qi charging. But Corsair also includes a little dongle, little fob that you can plug into type C, lightning port or a micro USB. So you basically turn any device into a Qi charging compatible device that will charge on top of your mouse mat. It's awesome, but you obviously have to keep in mind that the area of the mouse mat is not that large. So if you have your phone there, uh, your area of the actual operation where your mouse can move is smaller. I also like that we have an additional USB pass-through built into the hub on the MM1000, which means you can plug in the, or your wireless receiver for the mouse to eliminate the distance and uh, you know eliminate any potential unwanted latency. Whereas with PowerPlay, because of the proprietary wireless technology, you can only use the two mice, the G703 and the 903 with a PowerPlay mat, but I do like their implementation in terms of this uh, little puck at the bottom that you insert, which also gives the signal to the receiver on the actual mouse mat, so you don't have to plug in additional receivers for the mouse itself. And I think it goes without saying that both these mice can be used in wired mode with a micro USB cable, so they don't rely on the wireless charging mat. And the one major advantage of the PowerPlay ecosystem is the ability to swap out surfaces. We have a fabric one included and the hard one. I personally don't like the hard ones because even at 400 DPI settings, it feels a little bit too sensitive and I don't have as much control as I would with a fabric piece. Whereas with the MM1000, we only get the hard surface, which I don't particularly like, and it's also the entire thing is a bit thicker. I also don't like the really thick cable on the MM1000 because it's carrying power and the additional USB pass-through, whereas the cable on the power play is nice and compact, a lot thinner in comparison. But of course your decision to buy a mouse mat will be dependent on the mice itself. I prefer the G703 from Logitech. Uh, I just perform better with this in competitive. The shape is fantastic, the buttons are great, the weight is awesome, and the sense of performance is just incredible. Whereas the Dark Rock 3, all those things also apply, but it's slightly heavier, slightly bulkier, so for my particular style of FPS, it's just not my thing. But I feel like they streamlined the shape and the button design that uh, this will be a very popular thing for many of you out there. And I'll be using the Dark Core for the next few weeks alongside the MM1000 to get an idea of how this ecosystem could evolve in the future. And I really appreciate Corsair with going with the Qi charging protocol so that potentially it's be easier for them to, you know, come up with complementing products for their wireless charging mouse pads, but also could introduce many other players in the industry to come up with something similar. So you could kind of like cross brands and be fine across wireless devices. All right, so stay tuned for my full review of the Dark Core mouse and which of the wireless charging mats you perform more. Obviously the power play has the advantages of being able to swap out the surfaces and also have the full charging capacity regardless of where the mouse is on the mouse mat. Whereas with the Dark Rock, because of this whole Qi charging thing, it charges your mouse, but it can also charge anything else with Qi capability, which is awesome. For example, I'm charging my K63 wireless with the Qi charging dongle on the mouse mat. I never thought I would be charging a wireless mechanical keyboard on my mouse mat with a dongle that came with the mouse. <laughs> that's ridiculous, but so cool at the same time. All right, guys, that's all for me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.